Wally soft ah oh, can be her. Uh, Welcome to GT Not Live, where today we're checking in with Ash on their epic novel adventure. Ash, give us the quick lowdown on your epic novel adventure. Well, Matt, it sure has been a time. It has been a time. This episode will probably go up on December 1st, which means by the time this is up, I will be done. W wait, this is going up on December 1st? It's going up on December oh, 1st. Oh my gosh! Ah! So, wait, are you actually done then? Or... I guess we're filming this, what, about a week before? Yeah, a like little, a little less days, than a week, yeah. Like four days before or whatever. So, are you, are you there? Are you, are you confident? Have you, hit, have you hit the word limit or are you, like, reasonably close? I'm reasonably close. Wow. I'm right there. Well, with it being December 1st, then, are you able and willing to share what your novel is about? So, it's December 1st to you, viewers at home I, I like that you're pointing at them expecting them to like recognize like to you <laughs> well that's why i added the little like addendum at the end of no the, I, I appreciate that, that yeah. acknowledging the fact that i'm the only thing that they're seeing <laughs> right now that and anxiety bread right but you at home it's december 1st to you it's not to me so maybe once it's december 1st to me look it just feels a little bit too preemptive okay, okay? okay. i feel like if i sign it off before my december 1st then what if something falls through and I don't actually win? No, you're going to win. I believe in you. I, you've come this far. You've made it through Thanksgiving. You've made it through the wilderness. You made it through the wilderness. Sorry, I don't know why that slipped into my head. It was weird. <laughs> it was a weird reference to pull back there, but that's what I did. Yeah. Okay, fine. You know, it's, it, here's the thing. You don't have to reveal your novel ever. You do it at your own t pace, at your own speed. Yeah. I'm just saying, we've been teasing them for a long time, and if this is truly the first upload that's happening in the month of December, I'm just looking out for them. Right. I'm looking out for you guys. And, you know, I'm also... You I'm talking... I'm talking. Anyway, yes. I appreciate that little moment you had with them. We, we had a moment. We had a moment. Um, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Great. I'm just going to be so real with y'all. Be real. Not my December 1st. Okay. Hashtag not December. <laughs> it's not December. Hashtag to me. November 31. But yeah, it's okay. November 31st. Okay, well, that means that you and I are not going to film at all. No, no backups, no nothing until December 1st. So that way you can tell me and that way they can, you know, that we don't have to prolong this. Yeah. Okay. I think Ashes, Ashes novel reveal, no clickbait. Right. Very real. <laughs> Very real. Do not steal. No clickbait. <laughs> you won't believe what this is about. You will be amazed. Shocked. This is your last clue, to, last opportunity for a clue then, I guess. Oh my gosh. So make it a big one. Make it a big one. Make it a good one. So I've seen some people say that some of these clues are a little too similar. And you might think that. But I've said it before and I'll say it again. You have to think about my clues the way that you think about connections. There is a tying thing between them, mm -hmm. but there's things that make those clues different. Yeah. Right? Classic New York Times. Classic. Mm -hmm. That's exactly. What you need to know besides fragments I, I, and perspectives. I love, and that, I love that you're just prolonging this. As you, you knew this was coming. I did. Okay. It's so much pressure to make something that really counts. You, you, know? you, you, dug, you dug your own grave in this one because I, I gave you the opportunity. I'm like, hey, introduce it to everyone. You're like, no. And I'm like, okay keep I, coming up with clues then this might be the biggest clue of all biggest. and it's gonna sound if you don't really think about it it's gonna sound so stupid writing <laughs> that genuinely might be the biggest clue i've given wow i have something for y'all oh, i mean you already gave us one That's no a big one it's it's another yeah, because okay. it's your december 1st but not mine okay so i was actually so inspired yeah. by gt live yes. and the theorist community that this book in and of itself, which I have been teasing for the entire month. Entire month. Is a puzzle. Ooh! Wait, it's a puzzle book? It's a puzzle book. Oh! Well, now, now I'm excited. Yes. I mean, I've always been excited for you, but now I'm Thank personally you. excited. Yeah. Is there an Ash lore that we're going to be solving? So it's not Ash lore, but mm. the person who's, um, I guess, right, like the vessel that we're going through. The vessel. It's, it's the lore uh -huh. of them, but okay. you don't know like from the get-go mm -hmm. what that is you Ooh. have to you have to piece things together oh, man. and so if you really think about it using your big brains i've kind of been doing that the whole month 
with giving you these little clues wow. and you having to piece things together. This works on so many layers, Ash. Right? Just layers on layers on layers of gaming and writing and commentary. Exactly. So I guess tune in next time where Ash reveals everything. Exactly. Everything. Everything exposed. Ash exposed. Ash tells all. Yeah, that's better. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's no better. exposure. <laughs> Please. <laughs> anyway, hey, thank you, Ash. Thank you for sharing your journey with us. Congratulations on, on being in the like final home stretch as we record this. Thank you. I, I have faith in you. So you're you're like there, there. Oh, I'm, I'm there. That's awesome. Speaking of uh, having to solve lore and having to solve puzzles and clues, we are back today with the Welcome Home website, which I know had itself a Halloween update that uh, we weren't able to get to during the month of October, unfortunately. Uh, so what's the plan? Is there more updates since then, Ash? Or, or you're the one who's like, hey, we need to check out Welcome Home. So fill me in. What, what has happened? I know that Halloween, there were a couple of uh, small additions, mm -hmm. uh, but what else is going on? Yes. So Halloween, we had our fun little, like everyone's in costumes and there's a couple extra videos floating around, right? Okay. So can we still access those? Uh, yes. I, I, I mean, I'm, it's the internet. I'm just, yes, it is permanently ingrained everywhere on a, on, a, on a popular website. Yeah. Yeah. I pulled up the wiki and that has all of the hyperlinks to the pieces of media that we missed okay. um, last month. Yeah. But when Clown updated the website to take down the Halloween pictures, they left some things huh. behind. Okay. Um, I haven't seen a solid explanation of what these mean okay. or what they are or how they tie into each other. Okay. Um, and I thought, what better person to figure that out for the internet <laughs> yeah, thanks. than this guy right here? I appreciate your faith in me. How about, how about I just point them out to the community, pontificate for about 30 to 45 minutes, ultimately get nowhere, and then toss it out to the community to help? Yeah. Okay, great. Let's <laughs> let's do that. It's, instead of you expecting me to solve this immediately. Okay, so you said you pulled up the wiki and it, it's going to walk us through the changes? Um, you betcha. Excellent. So here we go. Welcome home to Welcome Home ARG. So here's the ARG elements. This is the 1121. Okay, so this is the more recent one. 1121. Yes. Here, let's, let's rewind back to this guy. So Halloween, the site received a Halloween update on Friday the 13th, very, very appropriate, with new images of, images of the neighbors in different Halloween costumes, new recovered merchandise and audio, new secrets and a hidden video. Okay, so first off, there's video 00 with Julie, Frank, Barnaby, Eddie, and Sally. Like the dialogue videos in the previous update, this video is accessible by clicking on a Halloween-themed bug. Okay, this guy. Um, that appears in the transcripts page below the happy, haunting, and to Boo and yours. Here, Julie, Frank, Barnaby, Eddie, and Sally talk with each other. It seems like a holiday party. Okay, let's check this out. and get my antennas, Julie. A pumpkin as big as a house seems a little far-fetched, don't you think? Oh, Julie, it was hardly as big as a house. It was closer to the size of a refrigerator, if you ask me. Well, that's just not true. My brother Joe Jones, he saw it himself, with his own... I forget how many eyes he has. At least two. Maybe three? No, no, two. Well, whether it's fact or fiction, it'd certainly make one swell store sale. That's for sure. I can't even imagine how much a puppy that size would sell for. Did somebody say puppy? Well, I am young at heart. No, 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 no. Fit, you're not going anywhere. We haven't even gotten into the cultural importance of Commedia dell'arte. Oh, Shelly, you're killing me. So much Gavin just to explain why you're dressed like a clown. Come to think of it, I should have known earlier. You do look a bit funny to me. Oh, Barnaby. I gotta admit, the this I mean, these this is gonna go on for a while. I am always impressed, and I'm I'm surprised at this point. I'm so trained with a lot of these ARGs where you get these like short little video clips and these you know it's like a minute teaser or things like that. This is a lot, and there's a lot of voice acting that's going into this. There's a lot of production in the world around you that there's there's so much audio design here that's really impressive, and you're getting extended interactions between these characters in a really cool way that a, not a lot of other ARGs and not even a lot of other games have really shown us. Uh, here, I'm going to keep it actually here because sometimes there's stuff hidden in the tabs. But I, again, just the recognition of this being a Thanksgiving meal 
or a, actually, I guess it wouldn't be Thanksgiving, this is Halloween, a Halloween update, but like a Halloween or Thanksgiving era meal with all these characters bouncing off of each other and, and really well fleshed out personalities and likes and dislikes and, and voice actors. It's really, really well done. Um, I also, again, love some of the decisions here. You obviously got the candy apple back here, but you also have what look to be candy apples designed around other like puppets and characters from this franchise, building out the lore of the neighborhood, I guess. Because as we know it, right, the the neighborhood is really just a subset of characters, right? It's it's this handful of seven, eight characters. Whereas here, you're seeing more puppets that aren't any of the existing types, at least not that I can really recognize. Is that, like, I, is that, I was going to say, is that Barnaby back there? It kind of... I guess that it, I guess that could be a, like a Barnaby themed because he's got the blue face, the pink like overhang, the dark blue ears. So maybe that is Barnaby back there. But it's cool that they have all of these characters fleshed out in candy apple form. I think that's really awesome. It's uh, oh the other thing I was gonna say. So it's interesting too that they're calling out stuff like Commedia dell'arte and stuff, which seems like a very specific reference. Um, there you go. Which is yeah, it's it's an it's an Italian thing, right? Um, this is this is reaching deep into like my my theater history, so I I could be wrong. Um, but yeah, okay, so it's it's traveling, right? It's a traveling theater show, if I remember right. Yeah, so it was it was like early clown shows. Yeah, that that would hop onto wagons and travel around, right? So the characters in Commedia dell'arte usually fixed uh, represented like archetypes, right? Stock characters. You had the here they rep represent like the foolish old men, the devious servant the military officer who's full of false bravado. Yeah, it's basically, you know, they were archetypes. They were, you know, it's the dumb jock or the, the ditzy blonde. You know, these kind of broad stroke characters that serve as like parody and pastiche and things like that. Characters are exaggerated real characters, just like we're familiar with. The know-it-all doctor, Il Dottore, a greedy old man called Pantalone. That's funny. A uh, perfect relationship, like, in the, so, yeah, it's it's this kind of, like, tongue-in-cheek, uh, over-the-top, like, pastiche style of art and style of theater, and so the fact that she's calling it out, did someone say, puppy, uh, where is this at? You're not going anywhere, we haven't even gotten, and it, it's kind of tossed out of nowhere here, so Sally says, not going anywhere, we haven't even gotten to the cultural importance of the Commedia dell'arte, like, why? So you have everyone talking about their respective style you know like oh i'm i'm the dog oh i'm the i'm the store owner a pumpkin as big as a housing but it's it's weird that they're specifically calling that out like to to reference something so specific in real world as Commedia dell'arte it feels intentional right so it's pulling in this idea of old theater italian reference uh which is interesting and it's different from your like typical thing that you would expect like a like a vaudeville or something uh, so I'm curious to see where this goes, but I'm when people are asking, like, oh, how do you research theories, or, or how do you find clues for theories, or whatever, something as specific and detailed as that, and, and a very focused reference there, really important, so... Let's keep going. Uh, she's, uh, I uh, oh, Pinocchio! Uh, or was it Pistachio? I think you might be thinking of Pedrolino. See? Even the mailman gets it. Pedrolino? So that's different from the greedy old man, the Torre. Pedrolino. Pedrolino. Comedia. So Pedrolino. Pedrolino is uh, Primo Zani, or comic servant of the Comedia dell'arte. It's a, I don't even know what, hypochorism. A pet name, really. Huh, look at, look at us, we're learning all sorts of new things today. Hypochorism of Pedro or Peter. The character made its first appearance in the last quarter of the 16th century, apparently in the invention of the actor whom the role was long identified. Okay. He was a low, rustic class character. The dramatic role was certainly not. It was a multifaceted first. The character was and still is rich in comedic incongruities. Let's see. Many Commedia dell'arte makes a connection between the Italian. Okay, so this is... So his function is to keep the play moving. Pedrolino seems to betray... Oh, jeez, there's a lot here. The go-between, the willing servant, the wily slave, who survives in, ser in serving others. And let's see some images, just so we can see it. Interesting. So kind of like a traditional clown. Here's the masks from back in the day. So he was a kind of a smart servant. And what's particularly interesting about that is the fact that she is 
you know, they're all servants, right? Like, based on our theories, one of the things that has been, that we've been talking about, right, is are they all subservient to the neighborhood, right? Are they all subservient to home, you know, this entity here? And we've been kind of going back and forth about Wally's role in that. Is Wally yet another servant to this thing? Is he the cult leader? Is he the embodiment of this or the representative of this thing? Like, what is his connection to this entity, home? Is he a priest? Is he a puppet? What is he? Looped into that, we've had the idea that Frank, uh, the gardener Frank, that he is the one who is a detective, basically, the one who's trying to, uh, to bust this open, that he might actually be aware of what's going on here, and he's infiltrating it from uh, the outside in to try and bring down the whole operation. And then we have all the other characters who are more or less like, hey, we are followers of this cult. You know, we've been brainwashed. We are subservient to it in some way. And so for them to be making a lot of references to a wily servant or someone who serves others or kind of like relishes the ability to serve others is forwarding that idea of, hey, these are in fact servant characters, or maybe they're more aware of what's going on than, than we thought. And maybe they're looking to subvert what's going on or betray what's going on. You know, they're servants who, yes, are serving a master and are living to serve, but you know, based on this this reference to Pedrolino, maybe there's something more there. You know, are they also kind of in on this subversion of home or are they trying to take it down? Or do they just kind of rejoice in the fact that they are serving this this other entity? But again, it's such a specific reference that obviously it is Clown as the storyteller trying to communicate something to us either about these characters or the themes of this world that isn't just like, oh, she's the actress. You know, um, Sally is the one who does theater shows or whatever. Of course I'd be, wait, is that supposed to be an intro? Oh, yes, yeah, that's not theater, Clown. Visual ID, there's a visible distortion to the video, which I didn't really see. The screen darkens and lightens at random and the screen gets covered in a discolored static. It's weird that the visual ID here in the transcript of what we're watching, the camera is staring down at a neatly decorated table adorned with festive baked goods and candy apples. I'm not sure if the placement of that visual ID matters there. Like, oh, now that we've talked about, maybe that's what it is. So they're talking about being servants, right? And one of the things that we've talked about in previous theories, when there is discontent amongst the neighborhood, when there is any sort of conflict, animosity amongst the people in this neighborhood, home responds, right? Uh, so all, if you think back to all the past videos that we've reacted to, the past theories that we've done, it seems like there is like a rumbling or a negative reaction or some sound or response from the entity of home in those moments where two neighbors are fighting and then all of a sudden you hear like a grumble or you hear home react or you hear Wally interject in some way. And so here it's interesting, right? We have Eddie, we have this discussion of theater, and it's like, oh, the mailman gets it, why don't you get it? Hold on, is that supposed to be an insult in some way? At which point, then we get the cue of, hey, now there's a distortion in the video. The screen is darkening and lightening, as though home has now inserted itself here. Maybe this moment of Eddie feeling like he's being attacked, or feeling like he's being insulted or belittled in some way, is again forwarding that idea of, now home is paying attention and is upset with the fact that his his cult, his, his people are not happy with each other. There's dissent among the ranks. And now he's paying attention, watching, you know, supervising, has been made angry in some way. Oh. Yep. Oh, wild. Ooh, hello. Oh man, <laughs> it's getting dark. Yeah. Oh, wow, you can't make out the thing. That was my At this rate, we'll be the laughing stock of the solar system. Oh, Sandy, dear, don't doubt yourself. You're doing a wonderful job. Here, hold up. Let's let's go back through the section that we just tried to listen to, but it was so distorted it was really hard to tell. Uh, the theater clown, Sally, you know I do hate to ruffle anyone's feathers, as it were, but why so much focus on horror for your party, especially when you're dressed for comedy? I think I'd much rather have a pleasant chuckle, why maybe even a turtle even. I think Sally's right, though. What's living without a little scare every now and then? 
I had a good time listening to all those tall tales of terror and treats, or whatever Barnaby called them. Nope, you're right, terror and treats. Oh, bother, I'll never get the entirety of the little neighborhood in stardom. At this rate, we'll be a laughing stock of our solar system. Oh, Sally, dear, don't doubt yourself. You're doing a wonderful job, but I wouldn't throw out the fun of clownery. Um, and then something, visual ID, something has happened to the apple. A bite has been taken out of it, I think. Huh. That's also an interesting detail here, is the fact that even the closed captioning is not like a neutral observer. It, it has a personality. That seems important. We might have to go back and, and reread all of these kind of these kind of assessments of what's going on. But the fact that it says, I think, it's now giving a personality and a character to the person who is transcribing what's happening in here. Um, and again, there have been moments where we have talked about how Wally, in these videos, in these situations that you find across the, the website, where Wally's kind of this like neutral figure standing off to the side watching these things happen, and then when suddenly someone addresses him or calls him to action, he activates. And we'll see how this winds up. Maybe that's how this video is going to end here. But it, so it's worth reminding you that that's how these things have gone in the past. But it's this idea of like he's almost like a camera or a filter for home or observing these things. But then when he's called upon to be a character, he like wakes up and now he's active in the scene again. So I'm wondering if maybe the writer or author of these closed captions, who's assessing what's going on in these circumstances, maybe that is Wally, like taking in the information. And so he's doing his personal take on it as like a, a neutral far off observer. And like, oh, the apples, the apple bit, I think. But he's kind of distanced from the action, as though his brain is like partitioned, or he's trapped inside his own brain, which is why a lot of the messages throughout the website are constantly this idea of like, I can see you, you can't see me, help me get out of here, I can't communicate with you, I'm trapped in a lot of ways. Oh, hello. <laughs> I'm like, what was that? Um, the bite of the apple is interesting. I don't know why that's specifically called Im to import I, apples in general. Like, like you see this, it's like festive holiday stuff. That's fine. You would expect to see a candy apple here. That's nothing unnormal. But again, in a series like this, where a lot of the the attention to detail is is there, and a lot of these story moments matter a lot. Apples very symbolic in a lot of ways. You know, ever since the very beginning with like the biblical apple of knowledge, Adam and Eve stuff. Um, apples are constantly used in movies to represent like, oh, this is the villain taking a bite uh, to show that they're a jerk or like they're the, you know, they don't care about the situation. And so they're, they embrace the like knowledge, the corrupting knowledge in a lot of ways. So apples are very symbolic. I think that's an interesting detail for them to specifically call out in this way. Might not have any importance here. I don't really see how it would fit, but I think I just, you know, it's worth calling out. Also, a lot of times apples are like the ones that you see like rotting in movies. You know, it shows like a, a beautiful, pristine, like perfect thing that's being corrupted in some way. So maybe it being bitten into whether that was physical or not, like is it corruption or a decomposing of the thing? As much as I'm enjoying all this talk and clowning around, I better go check out. And again, see, you have this. There's a brief pause. So Barnaby, here's my little do devil doing over here. You're guarding my apple for me, pal. There's a brief pause. What is he doing? So again, it's the, the fallibility of the person who's writing these. Like, we expect a transcription of a video to be this neutral narrator, right? This neutral, omnipotent person. You know, because it's just a transcript of a, of a video. It's closed captioning, right? But it's not, right? The fact that the closed captioning has limited knowledge of what's going on in the scene and has an I think and stuff shows that it's an unreliable narrator and it's a character in the story. So again, you have to take that into, consider into consideration as we're analyzing details like this and as we're looking across all these hidden videos on the website that they're being observed and transcribed by someone who is not an omnipotent narrator who is here and has some fallibility. Got my little apple. And I don't mean Wally. But you know what? I also mean Wally. Hey, how's my little devil doing over here? You guarding my apple for me, pal? Hmm. Oh. <laughs> eh, I guess you didn't do a very good job at it. Hey! Who took a bite out of my apple? I think I see fang marks, Frank. These fangs aren't real and you know that! <sighs> sure, sure. That's what they all say. Don't worry, though, kid. There's plenty of other eats here. What are you feeling hungry for, Wally? 
action hero as well. It's called the action, and now it ends. It's also worth noting that it ends with a glitch, as as though like a camera feed is cutting off, uh, or at least like the the visual shorthand of a camera feed cutting off. You also heard some like audio glitching there. So it's end visual and audio ID. So again, it reinforces this idea of like Wally being used or activated as some sort of surveillance cam until he has to become a character until he has to be interact with the people in this world. So this this video, interestingly enough, reinforces a lot of the stuff that we've said in the past, you know, in past theories, around this idea of Wally basically fulfilling two different roles here. He is a character in this world, but he's also a vessel or an observer or something for home. Is that a robot? Is he a puppet? Is he also brainwashed? Like, he has a lot of different functions here where he's shown multiple times worshipping home, talking to home in a lot of ways. So there's a different level of relationship there that's important, but he's also a, a, a puppet and a piece of technology for it, which is weird. You also have, again, this, this idea of as soon as there's dissent in the neighborhood, you see that friction happening, you see home and the video kind of having this like negative reaction and things kind of going crazy. Lastly, do we know who bit the apple? Does that matter? It seems like it matters. Barnaby comes close. How's my little devil doing over here? You're guarding my apple. So if he's getting close to Wally, Oh, I guess you don't didn't do a good job at it. Who took a bite out of my apple? I see some fang marks. Sure they are. That's what they all say. It sounds like Barnaby pats the camera. Don't worry, there, kid. What are you hungry for, Wally? So it's interesting. At first, I'm like, oh, it was Wally who potentially did that, but no, it, there's another per there's another person, another kid here, an entity, because he transitions from talking to the kid and then, hey, Wally, what are you hungry for? So who else would it be? We know it's not Sally. We know it's not Frank. Do we see do we see Howdy throughout this one? We saw Eddie for sure. Julie? It's got fangs. So it's interesting, right? They they say specifically the call out of fangs is interesting, which again maybe is referring to someone being not what they are, right? Where like, hey, all of these characters are normal characters, but someone is demonic evil or has like some hidden side to them where they're able to kind of like transform or turn evil. Ash, what do you think? Did you see the um the bit apple in um one of those character art um art pieces? I think it was um Eddie. Yeah, you could see the bit apple on that box. Oh, good eye. Well done. Thank you. No, you're totally right. Huh. That's interesting. If Eddie because we know Eddie's in the scene. Pop I like that Poppy exists in this, but as far as I know, like, we don't really do a whole lot with Poppy yet. She's, she's one that I think is, like, waiting to be unlocked or unearthed in some way. Yeah, and I guess, yeah, you're right. Eddie is the only one with any sort of apple-based imagery here. The, um, okay. Howdy has an How apple, but it's whole. Yeah. And there's a worm. Yep, there's a worm. Yep. Right? That's interesting. And this one looks good. Just remind me of this one. Hello, Mr. Deer. I'm here about your emergency. Oh, thank the stars you're here, Frank. Oh. I, I mean, Mr. Frankly, we're in a heap of trouble. There's some kind of, you know, like a, it, it's like, if you, you ever seen like, uh, it's like, uh, it's like, a uh, whatchamacallit in here. A whatchamacallit? I'm afraid I only deal with bugs, Mr. Deer. <laughs> you bug? A critter, a guest, a neighbor, whatever it is, it's upheaving my whole post office. Just look at what it's done with the paper chains. Not the paper chains. How it dare you? It made these. It did a wonderful job. Maybe you should consider hiring it. Real cute. I'm being serious here. Oh, there's nothing to be so scared of. It's more frightened of you than you are of it, you know. Scared? Of a friendly guy like me? I wouldn't even hurt a fly. That's interesting. So if all of a sudden we're making this connection of, hey, someone bit this apple and there are fang marks in it, that's a weird call out, right? And they specifically make it clear that the fang marks are meant to be real, right? The way, the reason that Clown, as narrator and creator of this world, right, would have included a, a toss to Frank and be like, hey, this apple has fang marks in it. And Frank's like, wasn't me, my fangs are fake says that real fangs made that bite. And it also shows that Frank wasn't the one who, who did it, so it, it disqualifies him. So if we're thinking it is Eddie, 
who has a, a bit Apple as imagery here. Now let's go back through Eddie lore and look, we see this. Eddie, he's very, he's, he's branding himself. I am a friendly guy. I wouldn't hurt a fly. But now we're getting, you know, an indication here that maybe he has hidden fangs. You know, maybe he is some sort of other entity hiding in plain sight, or maybe the, the fangs are symbolic of him actually being willing to hurt or, or be violent in some way. But the fact that they are actively calling out like, no, no, I'm a friendly guy, it's not me, feels very, very call outy of, oh no, this is, this is all smoke and mirrors, there's actually something here. I don't think you could even look at a fly with how you're hiding from this beetle. Hey, don't go knocking a fella down when he's in a fit of desperation. If you had a rogue envelope fluttering around your home, I'd get there lickety split. I'll take that into consideration next time that happens, Mr. Deer. See? Not so intimidating, is it? I love it? the sound design that you can... I love, and again, this is one of those like small production things, but I think is so smart about how this series does things. You can tell so much about the world and the spatial recognition just based on the fact that, like, oh, the recording is, is Frank has moved away and dealt with this bug, and he's further away from Wally as the like source of the audio and video that we're hearing. And so you get this great spatial awareness of everyone and the rooms that they're walking through just based on, you know, talking to the guy across the room or in a different room or whatever. It's really, really I well done. I suppose you're right. But it's easy for you to say so. I don't know these fellas on a first name basis like you do. You don't need to be familiar with them in order to get to know them better. They're just like you or me. In fact, you're not scared of them, are you? Wally. <laughs> <laughs> In fact, they're just like you or me. In fact, do the people know about Wally? I don't know. They do this thing where they talk around him. And right. Then include him in the conversation after the fact. Right. It's it's weird that yeah they 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 include him after the fact and I don't know if that's just like a, a product of how the lore is being set up and that's just like a hey we have to write it this way in order to communicate this you know to have this scene for the audience but it's weird you know Wally's just brought into this conversation at this point it's it's, it's odd it's odd anyway okay so that's that's the Thanksgiving or uh, Halloween video, which is really, really interesting. Uh, video shows a table set with uh, licorice, all sorts of candy apples, and the audio the neighbors discuss Halloween festivities. As their voices begin to overlap with one another, the video distorts and turns dark. An apple in the left corner begins to shake. Brief close-up of one of the treats on the table before the camera returns to its original position. Camera stops shaking and a bite mark appears in it. The video returns to normal. Yeah, this is everything that we saw. Okay. At this point, implied to be from yep, Wally's point of view. Check out the apple that Wally was supposed to be guarding. Barnaby accuses Frank of taking a bite, comforts Wally, and asks him what he wants to eat at this point, though. Because they treat, even though Wally is, like, leader of the group or leader of home in a lot of ways, everyone's kind of, like, not placating him, but it, it feels almost like he's childish in a lot of ways. What else we get? So there was one other part of this. In a part of the happy, haunting, to boo and yours audio found in the merchandise page, Sally tells a scary story to the others, but no transcript exists for this part because her words couldn't be heard clearly by the Welcome Home Restoration Project. They ask us, the listeners, to try and decipher what it says. Okay, so this was found on the merchandise page. Happy haunting to boo and yours storybook record. Here we go. What's a better way to get in the mood for Halloween than with the neighbors of Welcome Home? Hear for yourselves how they celebrate the spookiest day of the year with Sally Starlet's macabre menagerie of monstrous mischief-making. Enjoy a gaggle of bone-chilling tall tales through this newly uncovered storybook record. Date unknown. Ooh, it's endorsed by Crispy Sweets. Um, the discovery of this vinyl has brought assurance of even more recorded stories akin to Eddie's Big Lift. However, this particular audio rip skips at 1656 and quickly jumps past Sally's dialogue to 1851. Although the sound between these times is incomprehensible noise, we've transcribed what we could. I don't know. Are they not going to let us have this? That's the, oh, I guess it's thinking about it. <laughs> the internet's thinking. <laughs> it's like, oh, I'll get there maybe. Okay, hold up, hold up, okay. Uh -oh. I, I, I clicked too aggressively. This was my bad. I apologize. Let's see if we can get this to load in any way, shape, or form. You would think that there, this audio must exist somewhere. This is just, this is just really slow to load because we're it's, doing it through Wayback Machine. It's been uploaded onto YouTube and SoundCloud, it looks like. Okay. Well, we'll go there in a second then, so that way we don't have to um, wait for all this. So there's home, watching on. Home's also kind of sweating, I'm assuming, like anime sweat maybe. Is there anything that we can learn about their characters? Crispy sweets, a cereal. It does. It's interesting. It looks like Wally is actually on, Wally and Barnaby are on the cereal, right? So we're seeing them promoting their own cereal on their own product. 
Layers and layers of meta. There's Frank with his fake fangs. Uh, there's Barnaby with real fangs. He, it's a dog. He's a dog. So maybe that's why. Throwing that out there as a possibility, though. Wally's the only one that looks happy. Right? Moderately happy. It's also interesting how, like, he's, he's wearing a devil costume. Uh-oh. There's a lot of satanic imagery around Wally. Just saying. He is, he is enjoying himself. It's also interesting how depowered or, like, how minimal he is in a lot of this. Like, everyone else is so much bigger, and he's, as, again, like, the focal point of this ARG. It's interesting that he is depicted as being so small. Um, what's this? World? World? Arled? And then we got Play Follow Workle on in the U.S. or something like that. Play Follow. Copyright Play Follow something in the U.S. So, okay. A couple, a couple little details there as far as world building and associating the other companies that are making the series and things like that. It is probably worth knowing Play Follow. It might be worth tracking that one and seeing is that the company that made this in the first place, right? Like, is there a, 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 this whole time we're like, oh, this is an old forgotten TV show and this puppet world existed and all of this, but we haven't really dug into the company that brought it to life or sponsored it. This is all this like retroactive, hey, let's uncover this old series, talk about it, the characters, what happened to them, this and that. But we haven't really talked a whole lot about who brought that series to life in the first place or who produced that series. Because at the end of the day, like that is the root of everything. So you're going layers and layers deeper. It's it's like, yeah, there's Wally and Home and the show of Welcome Home, sure. But we're, we haven't even started to talk about, like, who are the people who brought all this stuff to life. So that's really interesting that there might be another entity below that. So you said it's on YouTube, Ash? Yep. Oh, Felipe Bruno. <laughs> Everyone's favorite. Funny, Devilish funny hairdresser. Flash game, Devilish hairdresser. Love it. We're going to play this one day. Um, <laughs> this would be Boo. What was it? Boo for you. Uh, welcome Happy home. haunting to Boo and you. Yeah. And yours. Welcome home. Happy haunting for Boo and yours. Great. Oh, this is it. Okay. Oh, wow. It's, it's a full. Happy Halloween. Oh. I'm like, I'm like, this is not the transcript. Speak, speaking of unreliable narrators. No, this is okay. Wow, this is... What a beautiful day in home, isn't it, neighbor? Just like every day before today and every day after. But something about today is a little different. Our Sally Starlet might describe it as a spine-tingling, bone-chilling and hair-raising sort of day. Interesting that there's a narr Again, like, in this idea of who are the people narrating the stories, what is their role in the wider arc of this thing? Are they a part of the community? Are they outside the community? Whatever. I think, unless unless this is, you know, one of the characters that we haven't spent a whole lot of time with, like, you know, like a poppy or something, I, the fact that it's only identified as narrator is interesting. It might be this neutral observer, but now that we know that the closed caption person is involved in some way, Wally or whoever, um, it's important for us to just be aware that, hey, this also might have an effect. Like, this person might also be an unreliable dear friend movie. Poppy Partridge always dreaded, even as she helped prepare for the celebration. Yes, that's right. It was Sally's favorite holiday, the macabre menagerie of monstrous mischief-making. A monumental mouthful, if you ask me. But we've had our time talking. Let's peer into Poppy's window to hear about it for ourselves. That's creepy. Shouldn't be peeking into people's windows. <laughs> to say of monstrous mischief-making festivities. Sally carefully placed down the assorted treats on the table. Some even looked like our neighbors. They ought to make one for the narrator, though. Well, See, and, huh, interesting, there it is again. Neighbors. They ought to make one for the narrator, though. So again, the narrator has an opinion. It's That's really interesting. Through all of these pieces that we're looking at today, the narrator is in, inserting themselves, interjecting, or has some sort of jealousy or an, at least an opinion of what's going on in the world. And here, 
the narrator is is made to be neutral. Is this Wally, by the way? The the voice kind of sounds like Wally. It's Wally esque. Right. It's what right. It's Wally adjacent. I don't know if it's actually Wally, and it would be weird for them to identify it as narrator rather than Wally. But I don't know if that's intentional. If they're obscuring the fact that it's Wally. Or if this is meant to be a different character voiced by the same uh, voice actor as Wally. Why, of course, dear. It's so lovely to help you with. Anyway, your... this goes on forever. Uh, <laughs> a long, long time. So instead of listening to the whole thing, which I would highly encourage anyone to do, and also, you know, we will absolutely do before the next time we do a, a theory on this, um, in the interest of making sure that we get to a lot of different things and aren't just sitting here for the next 20 minutes listening to some Halloween story. Uh, 1656 to 1851, I'm curious about this because that's what they specifically call out. The fact that they're calling it out means that you should probably listen to the whole thing to make sure that there aren't clues hidden in the places that they're not calling out because that's suspicious. Um, but they are specifically calling out the, the glitch here. What is it searching for? 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 Searching, 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 searching,
fangs, he he says, I'm not going to hurt a fly, but transforms at night. Like, maybe that's what this is referring to. Because I see it working both ways, right? Like, oh, you know, th this place is I'm evil okay. and it's going to swallow you up. Like, I, I could see that being... And, and even the even the person who's transcribing this and, and did that little okay. video You're edit there fine. of, like, showing Wally's eyes as the kind of jump scare here. I don't think it's Wally. I think Wally is a separate entity and a separate evil here, potentially. I feel like a, this might actually be a reference to Eddie in some way, if we are making this connection between the bit Apple. Um, interesting, a lot of cool stuff for Halloween. Really compelling, and then obviously there's 20 minutes else outside of all of this. So that's Halloween. So this is the new stuff. So you said they took down, the clown took down the Halloween stuff, as you do. I, I did that this weekend um, with, thanks, with the Thanksgiving stuff and threw up the Christmas stuff. Um, so now there's new things on the website? Yes. So if you head back to the homepage, yes. our regular homepage, um, you'll find that there is a weird ask of the viewer. Okay. Welcome home. Welcome website. Feel free to explore. It's always been there. Website updates. Right. Hello. Right. Hello. Where? Um, there's the bugs, hidden bugs. So the bugs are still kicking around the website. I love how each layer just adds to itself. Right. Hello. Is it there? Nope. Uh, oh, it was capital H, right? Right, hello. H-E-L-L-O. -L -L -L. No. Clown illustrations, right, hello, maybe? Right, hello. Uh, slash, hello. That do something? Mm, looks like it just gave us the same. Where would you write hello? Guestbook? No, see, yeah, I know that they, they cut that you can't write in the guest book anymore. That was one of the updates. Is there anywhere else that you could write things? Write hello. These are the, yeah, these are all the bugs that we've, we've talked about in a past episode. Um, do you know where I'm supposed to write hello? No. Oh, excellent. Thank you. No one does. Oh, fantastic. Uh, is there more? Yeah, there's various commands like this all across the site. Okay. Um, whether it's in the neighborhood, um with different character pages right, hello stickers stickers page let's go to stickers page make your web page feel like home by spreading the good word about welcome home with these silly stickers remember there's no place like home neighbor banners neighbors right okay was the first one in quotes nope huh that's interesting so this one's right hello the second one is in quotes right okay again like both are caps no nope. welcome home links Nope. Huh. Welcome home links. Okay. Okay. Weird. It's not giving us anything. Okay, there's Wally as the devil again. So you're seeing some of their Halloween costumes. It's fun. Yeah, as the ghost, as the different characters. Okay. So let's Sally Page. Sally's, okay. Go to Sally's. Oh, hello. Stop jumping around. <clears throat> Sally. Reverse this image of Sally. Like, copy image. Thanks for pulling this up. Reverse. So reverse to me, it's interesting that it copies to, to dark black here. Um, reverse to me means two things, right? It could be just literally reverse it. Reverse an image. I mean, I think like flip it. That's reversing the image, I guess. <laughs> what has that done? That hasn't changed nothing, nor would I have expected it to. Reverse, to me, I, the other thing that I think of when it comes to reversing an image makes me think of inverting it, where you do basically do like a photo negative of it. But that's not, that's not giving us anything either, right? Reverse, reverse the image. And I know we've, we've called this out in past episodes too, where we, we acknowledge the fact that Sally is interesting because she's, she's got the FNAF thing going on. We're like, oh no, one eye is one thing, one eye is the other thing, and one side is this thing, and one side is this other thing. So she's a, a character of duality, right? Even the fact that she's an actress and she's a s starlight, you know, starlet, I mean, shows that there's a facade and then there's something underneath. That is the classic, like, if someone's an actor in any sort of storytelling, there's that dichotomy of... They're publicly facing persona versus who they are underneath when you when you tear away the covers. And so she has a lot of that in here where it's like she's got the two things going on. So what reverse an image? Is it, since I'm here, I might as well just do classic brightness because you know, I mean, level limit brightness. I don't think this is going to do anything though. That doesn't, you know, that's nothing there. Huh. The other thing that comes to mind if I'm thinking reverse the image, reverse this image of Sally. Uh, if I save the image, 
Okay, save. Sally, Sally edited. That's interesting. Sally edited. Okay, yeah, this is this is nothing. This is just the image again. What I'm thinking is, can you open it with? So we did this when we did our ARG a couple of years ago. It was the the kind of like year long ARG that we did for everyone. It was super hard, but we did one where we made you open an image in Notepad because you can just because it's an image file, right? Like at the end of the day, it's a bunch of like ones and zeros and code and this and that. Like it has to translate to computer language. It's not just an image. But if you were to reverse this, like I don't even know how you would take. What would it be? It would you would take this code. Fl I don't know how you would reverse it. Like th maybe there's a website or something that allows you to do that. And then you would open it back as a. You would open it back as an image again maybe I don't know I've that is a, a wild request to do I don't know what it's asking for and there's nothing and there's nothing hidden in it right like nothing that looks remotely like real words nothing that looks like actual text that might be buried in here that might have like a hidden message yeah I, 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 you would think that it would like jump out or that it would be slightly more obvious so the only thing I can think of is taking that finding a way to reverse the, the this code in some way and then resaving it as an image maybe that's weird. Okay, so write hello, write okay, reverse the image next to the mystery audio title. Move Barnaby. What is this guy? Barnaby, what do you call a beagle with no ears? Nothing, he can't hear you anyways. Okay, so it said, wow, there's so much. Mystery, mystery audio, move Barnaby. Uh, let's see. View page source. Is there a world here? Wow, there's a lot of instances of Barnaby. 913 instances of Barnaby. All right, well, we're going to be here for a while. Move Barnaby. Yep, that's the text. How would I do this? If I move... So I'm wondering if there's this image layer on top of... Like, I see this one. I say, Move Barnaby makes me think, here's Barnaby. I'm wondering if there's a link or message or something underneath it that, you know, they're trying to get us to actually remove it so we can see what's underneath it. The question that I have is, how are they expecting us to do that? Because you can't drag it away. Can we open it? I mean, I guess what you could potentially do is you could take the source code of the website, drop it into its own separate website, uh, like recreate the entirety of the website. So you take the, the code of the website, you kind of make your own website using it, but then you remove the Barnaby code, which is why if you go here, somewhere, oh, there's only 14 Barnaby now? That's, that's slightly more manageable. Uh, da, 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 da. Oh my gosh, it's so long. That's the thing about like any sort of website text. Where are we at? Where are we at? Here's Barn more Barnaby stuff. Move Barnaby. Okay, here's the text. Site foot wrapper, site footer. See, this is where I wish I had done more website coding in school. I only got like a class or two and it was so long ago. But I wish I could still be able to like do this or like know more specifically how to find a lot of this stuff quickly and efficiently because I recognize that I'm fumbling through a lot of this and especially when it came to like nice found a tiny flower excellent when it comes to like making a website look nice and stuff I definitely didn't have that hit party coffin yeah this is just pushing us back here but that's where find Barnaby is so on the site I'll move Barnaby here let's let's look for where was that where is it at all right, that's thinking through it. Give it a sec. Um, but yeah, that's the thing I, I'm wondering here is if it's just covering up some hidden image underneath. There's the bug. Is this how the website always was? Because look at how broken up it is. Did I do this by moving Barnaby? As you go layers deeper into it, it's just slowly falling apart. This is great. I, I, I love this as a mystery. Okay, move Barnaby is one. And then lastly, oh, is there one more? The Playfellow exhibition page above the Playfellow Turn the Playfellow exhibition upside down. Turn the Playfellow exhibition upside down. I don't think this is what it's going to be. Do we need to recode the website to do this stuff? Is that what's going on here? Here we go. Let's try. Turn the Playfellow exhibition upside down. Dun, dun, dun! <laughs> here it is! We did it! Anything interesting? No. So then it brings the question of, is it something, one of these pictures? Because these are part of, oh, there's the crispy sweets. That's the cereal that we saw. So we were right earlier saying, oh, it's their cereal. As a cereal, it's the most. I forgot about that. Huh. And no one's been able to find any of this stuff out, huh? Not really. Um, at least from what I've seen, by the time this episode goes up, it's very likely that someone might have. 
in all the hidden offset letter pages, okay, so these are the ones that we were working on before um, when we were solving some of the earlier clues in this ARG. The URLs have changed so that they now have written delete next to them. For example, blank is now blank delete. Huh, okay, so that maybe implies that because this is the Playfellow exhibition, maybe the Playfellow exhibition is like cleaning up stuff. We are saying how the person in charge of this exhibition, you know, might be brainwashed or might be coming a puppet for home as well. Of them all, I feel like these last two are the ones that will be easier to solve first. Whereas like, write hello, write okay, not 100% sure where you're doing that if it's not the URL bar. So, you know, unless it's like here and I just type in hello, but that didn't do anything, right? Like maybe there's a, a secret like key logger or something that's, yeah, no. So I feel like these other ones make more, these move Barnaby, flip this upside down, that makes more sense. Reverse the image is probably the vaguest of them because it's like, what do, what do you mean by reversing an image? And then once you find out where we write these, that might be okay. Huh, Indra, this is cool, okay. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, as of, 11.21, so a couple days ago, this is the latest thing that we have to crack, right? Is what do these things mean and how do we effectively activate on what... It's very explicit instructions, actually, which I appreciate. I think that that's what's cool about this puzzle is the fact that they are very explicitly telling you like what you have to do. The problem is how do you do it? And so that's, that's cool. That's a really cool puzzly thing for us to, to chew on. So uh, I know we just released our video about solving the Five Nights at Freddy's Tally Marks ARG, figuring out the meaning of the numbers 245, uh, the Foxy Grid. I've seen a lot of people on the subreddit kind of jumping in and like, let's look at the Foxy Grid for the umpteenth time and figure out what that's trying. If you need a break between all your FNAF puzzle solving, uh, here's an, uh, a new bunch of ciphers and clues and codes that are happening over on Welcome Home. But yeah, let me know down in the comments below. Uh, good luck with this one. This is fun. Uh, and and again, Welcome Home, probably for me, one of the standout IPs of this year to, to really step out and be like, hey, we're on the scene where we've got cool artwork, we've got a cool story, and we're presenting puzzles that are so vastly different and so unique that to everything else that we've seen kind of in, in this like world so far in the ARG space and the video game space that I'm, I'm always really excited to see what's going on here. So let me know uh, your thoughts, your comments. Good luck. Thank you for your help. There's always the Game Theory subreddit if you have any thoughts and, and feelings over there as well. And we'll see you on the flip side for more of Ash's novel and for more puzzle solving as we go about. So thank you guys so much for watching. And as always, remember, it wasn't a video. But, well, it was a video. It wasn't a live stream, but it was a video. A video for you. See ya.